the NASA moon landing, what astronaut Buzz Aldrin saw out of the Apollo 11 window. He said it was casting a shadow. Uh, I just wanted, this is not part of the article, but this is what they recently found in one of the images of the Apollo landing underneath the astronaut's feet. As you can see here, it's clearly a jar, um, an opening to what looks like some kind of perhaps a plaster jar or a metallic jar, very dusted, or a rock jar, who knows, but it looks like it's a jar. And uh, we don't know if the astronauts actually saw it. If they did, perhaps they would have picked it up as an archaeological find on the moon. This is one of the legs of the uh, lander, as we saw, but unfortunately, you'll see it again. To me, it looks quite clean, because the astronauts said that the dust was very fine. It was sticking on to the soles of their boots and to the side. It was sticking on to the sides of the boots, but we saw that the pedals are quite clean. Anyway, this is what the cloud feature that Buzz was talking about, what he saw out of his uh, 11, Apollo 11 moon. It's so huge, it was casting a shadow. It seems to be somewhere over Iran or something, uh, because the sun is basically over North Africa, uh, Israel, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Iraq. That must be Iran somewhere. So this um, is on the um, Express UK. Sebastian Ketley, today's article. NASA's moon landing, what Neil Armstrong observed from his, um, and Buzz Aldrin. Let's go to Neil Armstrong first. One small step. NASA's moon landing, all the way back from July 1969. Astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first man to walk on the moon and the incredible details of that momentous event. And as its 50th anniversary looms, it's unbelievable that all these decades, they have not returned to the moon. Uh, everybody is wondering why is that? Well, they will be going back after they've noticed that a lot of other countries are interested in going back to the moon. Uh, so, uh, okay. NASA won the space race to the moon. July 20th, 1969, the United States beat the Soviet Union to the lunar finish line with Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. They were the first two men to accomplish this unbelievable feat of, star tra uh, of interstellar travel. So the uh, flying over their heads locked in lunar orbit was the command module piloted by Michael Collins. But the honor of being the first man to set foot on the moon was given to mission commander Neil Armstrong. On July 21st, just six hours after Apollo landed, Apollo 11, Armstrong and Aldrin ex uh, exited the eager lunar module. And that's the one that we saw that had the pedal uh, quite clean. The one that's wrapped in the gold filament was dust free. Anyway. Um, an estimated 650 million people worldwide watched this as Commander Armstrong descended the dusty surface of the moon to, to the dusty surface. The astronaut famously announced that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. After the astronaut uttered these iconic phrases, he described to NASA's mission control in Houston, Texas, exactly what the moon looked like. He said, thankfully for us today, detailed transcripts of the Apollo 11 mission and all audio communications were stored and digitalized by NASA. According to Commander Armstrong, the surface of the moon is very fine and powdery, almost like sand. The astronaut had no trouble moving around in the lunar regolith and immediately noticed his footprints. Despite the moon only having one-sixth of the gravity of Earth, he said that movements were easier than in Earth simulations. 
Commander Armstrong said, yes, the surface is fine and powdery. I can kick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in fine layers like powdered charcoal to the sole and sides of my boots. I only go in a small fraction of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints of my boots and the threads in the fine sandy particles. Ah, there seems to be no difficulty in moving around, as we suspected. He goes on to say it's even perhaps easier than the simulation of 16G that we performed in the very simulations on the ground. It's absolutely no trouble to walk around. And quote, a bit later, Armstrong and Aldrin were photographing the moon on Hasselblad cameras, collecting track samples, and the astronauts vividly described the signs. And Armstrong said, it's a stark beauty all its own. It's much like uh, that of the high desert in the United States. It's different, but it's very pretty out here. Apollo 11 and its three astronauts returned to Earth a few days later, July 24th, and splashed down in the South Pacific Ocean. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Richard Nixon. After receiving the prestigious award, Aldrin said, There are footprints on the moon. Those footprints belong to each and every one of you, to all of mankind, and they are there because of the blood, the sweat, and the tears of millions of people. These footprints are a symbol of the true human spirit. And Neil Armstrong said, we were privileged to leave on the moon a plaque saying, for all mankind. Perhaps in the third millennium, a wayward stranger will read that plaque at Tranquility Base and let history mark that this was the age in which that became a fact. Now, uh, going to what... Uh, Buzz Aldrin saw, and what he said, NASA's moon landing, Buzz Aldrin saw this out the Apollo 11 window, and he said, it's casting a shadow. Sebastian Ketley, Express UK, says, NASA astronaut Buzz Aldrin was fascinated by a bizarre event he witnessed outside of the Apollo 11 spacecraft window, according to transcripts of the moon landing mission. NASA's Apollo 11 ended the space race with the Soviet Union when astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. The U.S. won that race, as we know. The monumental achievement accomplished a goal set by U.S. President John F. Kennedy in May of 61 and cemented American dominance in space. Apollo 11 astronauts, including Commander, Command Module Pilot Michael Collins, were hailed as American heroes as this 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 mission approaches. Astronomers and enthusiasts alike are revisiting this uh, extraordinary historical event having to do with uh, space travel. Now, Apollo 11 launched from Florida's Cape Canaveral, July 16, 61, on an eight-day mission to the moon and back. And during these eight days in space, NASA's astronauts kept an open line of communication with NASA's mission control in Houston. All of these communication logs were recorded, stored, and digitalized, digitized by NASA for analysis to, to be done today. Thanks to NASA's effort, diving into these uh, archives of Apollo 11 tapes can shed lights on the behind the scene of the mission. One moment in particular stands out on the third day of the space flight when Buzz Aldrin looked outside of the command module spacecraft at the shrinking Earth behind him as they were heading to the moon. And as the astronaut looked over the entire continent of Africa, Europe, and the Middle East, something caught his attention near the border of Pakistan and India. The astronaut then patched into Houston, Texas, a report to report a shadow, quote-unquote, passed over the globe. A shadow passing over the globe. Hmm. He said, Houston, Apollo 11, we've got the continent of Africa right facing towards us right now, and of course everything is getting smaller and smaller as time goes on. And he goes on to say, the Mediterranean is completely clear. The sun looks like it's about to set around Madagascar. The equatorial belt of Africa stands out quite clearly. 
we're seeing a dark green or a muddy colored green compared to the sandier colors of the southern tip of Africa and of course the Sahara northern coast of Africa. There's a rather remarkable cloud that appears in the vicinity of the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. That was, as we know, also at the um, uh, line lineage of from day to night. That was the cloud was around there uh, as um, day was turning into night, or as night was turning into day, we should say. So he says it's just about to go into sunset now. It's casting quite a large shadow. It's isolated, he says. Uh, there don't see doesn't there doesn't seem to be any other clouds. The band of clouds near the tropical convergent clouds down around the equator clearly separate the clockwise and counterclockwise cloud formations over. Now, according to Aldrin, the shadow cast by this unusual cloud was roughly the size of the Persian Gulf. That's how big it was. Astronaut Bruce McCandles. McCandless, who was uh, communicating with Apollo 11, replied, OK, we copy the width of the Persian Gulf, and I guess that all I can give you firsthand is a single isolated data point, and that is that it was clear here in Houston this morning. That's a pretty localized observation. Aldrin then concluded the cloud was a single cell thunderstorm brewing up to 50,000 feet in the sky, he said. He said, the eastern Mediterranean is phenomenally clear. You can see all the lakes. The Dead Sea stood out quite well over. Not long after the exchange between NASA and Apollo 11, the mission reached the moon, where these three astronauts prepared for the lunar descent. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed July 20th, but it would take six hours of preparations until they left their Eagle lunar module on July 21st. Upon their return to Earth on July 24th, after spending more than 21 hours on the moon, the three pioneers were awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Richard Nixon. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.